No, this isn't an eldritch abomination, it's a bird. This is the African Jacana, and a lot of people are both terrified and confused by these. Allow me to shed some light on the subject. It almost looks like it has a bunch of extra feet, right? In actuality, those are baby Jacana. Jacanas are incredibly successful birds, which has led to them being polyandrous, which means the mom has multiple partners while the male raises the chicks. However, these newly hatched chicks don't have the easiest time getting around the shallow lakes of their parents, so the males have developed a brilliant way to carry them around under their wings. They literally pick them up with their wings and stuff them in there like a backpack. So while this image may look terrifying, it's actually a good parent, which is adorable in its own right. By now, most folks know that ravens are one of the smartest birds. But exactly how smart are our feathered friends? Ravens are one of four creatures that display linguistic displacement. This means that ravens can communicate about things that are not immediately in front of them, like a carcass nearby. Ravens are also in the habit of trading, whether it be with other ravens or even with people. And they're smart enough to recognize when a trade is unfair as well. Because they can remember who wronged them, they won't trade with that being anymore. Like many animals, ravens will cache and store food for a later date. However, ravens will Will often watch where other ravens deposit their food caches and steal from them. This thievery is so common that many ravens will often pretend to cache their food and fly off somewhere else to store it. And honestly, my favorite raven fact is that they're one of the few creatures that understand the concept of fun. They've been observed playing with wolf pups before and even sliding down snowbanks just for the fun of it. Easily one of the most fascinating modern dinosaurs. A bird famous for its aggression, this is the Canadian goose. This is one of the most successful large birds in all of North America so much so that in many places they're considered a pest. However, most of us know better, and not everybody feels that way. You know what? You got a problem with Canada gooses, you got a problem with me, and I suggest that that one marinate. These geese are incredibly aggressive, yet incredibly successful. But why? The easiest answer to that question is us. You see, by 1950, hunting and deforestation had driven their population extremely low. We began breeding programs to try to save the species as best as we could. This was incredibly successful, and today we have millions of geese all over North America. However, as their population increased, so too did their boldness. It seems that over the course of time, geese lost their fear of humans. This lack of fear allows them to be far more aggressive. This bad behavior is only reinforced because humans insist on feeding them. So honestly, if you don't like Canada gooses, you can't really blame anybody but humanity. You have a problem with Canada gooses, you got a problem with me, and I suggest you let that one marinate. This is one of the most dinosaur-looking birds that can be found alive today. Meet the Hawatsin, a tropical South American bird. These birds are about the same size as a pheasant, just over two feet or about 65 centimeters. One of the most interesting things about this species is their young. Young Hawatsin are born with claws on their wings, reminiscent of dinosaurs like Archaeopteryx. These claws are used to climb in and around trees before their flight feathers came in. By the time a Hawatsin reaches full maturity, they've lost those claws and their wings have come in full. Even so, they're not the best flyers and are actually rather clumsy in the air, which can most likely be attributed to the dense jungles they live in. Regardless of how clumsy they are, these guys are true dinosaurs. That is your reminder that dinosaurs really do still live among us. That is a cassowary, one of the largest birds still alive today. On average, these modern-day velociraptors reach about 5 to 6 feet tall, or 1.5 to 1.8 meters, with some estimates reaching upwards of 6.5 feet, or 2 meters. When I say modern-day raptor, that's no joke. They have a claw that can reach upwards of 5 inches, or 125 millimeters. They use their legs as their main defensive weapon, using them to kick outwards. And sometimes they want to end something so badly that they'll resort to jump attacks, where they can jump nearly 5 feet, or 1.5 meters, into the air. But even an animal this terrifying deserves your respect and protection. Because of habitat loss by humans and invasive species like dogs and pigs, their numbers have been in decline. And on mainland Australia, there's thought to be less than 2,000 left. And I hope that we can all come together to help protect these amazing yet terrifying modern day dinosaurs. This curious looking bird is called a hornbill. Right off the bat, yes, I know they look very similar to toucans, but they're actually not that closely related. Their similarity to toucans is actually an example of convergent evolution. Hornbills are actually incredibly successful, with over 50 species spread across 15 genera. Hornbills can be found all across Africa and Asia. Many of them have odd and very specifically unique behaviors. For example, the helmeted hornbill uses its cask as a battering ram against other hornbills. Oh, by the way, this thing on top of their head is called a cask. And these 
hornbills use them as rams in a dramatic aerial joust. Some hornbills, like the Malabar Pied Hornbill, will even eat poisonous fruits. Despite that, most hornbills don't exclusively eat fruit, but will also supplement their diet with small animals. Hornbills are monogamous, and during the mating season, they have an excellent way of defending their nest. Before the female lays eggs, her and the male will cover the entrance to the nest with mud, droppings, and fruit pulp. This is mostly to defend themselves from other hornbills. They're oddly aggressive, little buggers. This is one of the most beautiful, successful, and widespread birds in the entire world. This is the barn owl, and they can be found in almost every habitat across the entire world. With potentially over 15 subspecies, these guys know how to adapt and survive in almost any environment. They have a few key features that allow them to be so successful. One of them is their ability to fly almost silently. Like most owls, they have tiny serrations on their wings that help them to break up the flow of air, allowing this brilliant predator to approach its prey undetected. Another key feature to the barn owl's success is its face and its ears. Like many owls, barn owl's ears are placed at different heights on its head. When sound approaches an owl, it first hits their facial disc, which then distributes that sound to both ears. One ear tells the owl the distance to their prey, and the other ear tells the owl the height of their prey. These are brilliant and beautiful predators, but you know I can't let you guys go without disturbing you a little bit. Barn owls don't hoot like regular owls. They scream. <laughs> This is one of the most successful owls in the entire world. You may already recognize it. This is none other than the Great Horned Owl. Those horns on the top of its head are actually tufts of feathers called plumicorns. We don't fully understand plumicorns, but we believe that they're used for territorial interactions between owls. And contrary to popular belief, these plumicorns have nothing to do with the owl's ears. As I mentioned earlier, this is one of the most successful owls, but what sets them apart? In short, it's their adaptability. These birds have managed to survive in almost every Every environment from snowy tundra to hot desert and even tropical rainforest. Based on what we can tell, as long as there's somewhat moderate tree cover, they can survive almost anywhere. They just need a tree to call home. And that is absolutely magnificent. This, in my opinion, is the cutest type of owl. These are burrowing owls, one of the smallest owl species in the world. The largest of these guys typically reach only about 11 inches or 28 centimeters in length. As their name suggests, these guys spend a lot of time in and around their burrows and as a consequence on the ground. To adapt to this, they grew incredibly long legs, which also allow them to run to a certain degree. Like all owls, these guys are vicious little predators, but they tend to favor insects like crickets and grasshoppers, though they will take some larger prey, even going after birds as large as doves and sparrows. Outside of North America, these guys are incredibly successful and can be found almost everywhere in South America. But unfortunately, here in North America, these guys are in danger. There are two major reasons for this, one being loss of habitat and the other being loss of animals that they depend on. Most burrowing owls actually can't dig their own burrows and rely on other animals to dig it for them. These animals, like prairie dogs and ground squirrel, are declining in population themselves because of farmland. And hopefully we can come together to prevent their localized extinction. This is one of the creepiest birds, sometimes referred to as the undertaker bird. This is the marabou stork, a species of bird native to sub-Saharan Africa. Standing at around 5 feet or 1.5 meters tall and with a wingspan of upwards of 10 feet or 3 meters, these guys are a really large bird. Marabou storks get their unsettling appearance from their diet. Much like vultures, who the storks normally hang around, these guys are also scavengers. Like vultures, their head spends a lot of time on the inside of a corpse, and because of that, it can cause feathers and similar to get very clogged up and blotted. As this species doesn't have a hooked beak or anything similar, they'll usually wait around for vultures to tear carcasses open before going in themselves. Honestly, my favorite thing about marabou storks is their attraction to fire. Marabou storks are attracted to grass fires and will often fly to the opposite end and chase down anything running away from it. Imagine being a small reptile or mammal and manage to have escaped from a blazing fire just for this bird to come and snatch you up. Brutal and absolutely deserving of the name, the Undertaker Bird. This modern dinosaur is known as the B-Rex, more commonly called the Shoebill Stork. They're rather tall birds, reaching about 3.5 to 5 feet or 1 to 1.5 meters. Their wingspan is even more impressive, reaching up to 8.5 feet or 260 centimeters. But this dinosaur's most notable feature is its massive beak. They have one of the most robust and the third longest bill of any bird. They use these bills to communicate with one another, clacking them together. And I mean, let's be honest, this sounds completely unnatural. It sounds almost like a machine gun. 
They use these massive and powerful bills to hunt, usually for large fish. And the size of their beak actually allows them to take larger prey than most other storks. But despite their incredibly fearsome appearance, these guys are actually incredibly docile towards humans. Though I can definitely see why some folks are terrified of this majestic and amazing bird. This is one of my favorite modern birds, the scarlet macaw. Macaws are a subgroup of parrots and they can be distinguished by a blank patch of skin on their face. Scarlet macaws are often referred to as one of the most beautiful birds on the planet because of their dazzling plumage. They're not very large birds, only reaching about 32 inches or about 81 centimeters in length, but more than half of that is just their tail feathers. While typically a fairly docile bird, during the mating season these guys can get extremely aggressive. But of course, what good parent doesn't aggressively defend their babies? Many Many people seem to believe that this bird is endangered and that's kinda true. In many places along Central America, the scarlet macaw has lost a lot of its natural habitat. And unfortunately, it's led to a few local extinctions. However, overall, the species is still doing well with a great number of birds still living in South America. They are some of the most beautiful and intelligent birds in the entire world. 2011's Rio introduced many of us to an extremely rare bird. This is the Spix's macaw, otherwise known as the Little Blue Macaw. And Rio wasn't wrong either. These birds were, and technically are, in grave danger. As of 1990, there were only 15 Spix's macaw left that we knew of. Over the years, a multitude of breeding programs have increased their number, mainly led by Al Wabro Wildlife Preservation. Unfortunately, for a long time, that wasn't enough, and in 2019, the species was declared extinct in the wild. A major issue with the breeding program was such a low diversity of genetics. This problem was partially solved by artificially breeding spixes with other macaws. Thanks to the dedication of so many organizations, the captive population of spixes in 2022 was over 170. As of June of 2022, they released some specimens back into the wild as part of a reintroduction program. Eight macaws were reintroduced to the wild, and because of their success, 12 more are planned to be released this year. Their success is something to be celebrated, and I can't wait to see what happens in the future. This is one of the most unique birds of prey alive today. This beautiful bird is none other than the osprey. Osprey are one of the most successful birds of prey, having a near cosmopolitan range. That means they can be found in almost every habitat across the world. This success is largely due to their diet and the adaptations to assist them with said diet. Ospreys have evolved to hunt down fish, and they are extremely good at it. Like owls, ospreys have reversible toes, meaning they can grip with two in the front and two in the back, which makes it far easier to actually grab the prey in the first place. The scales on the talons of the osprey are backwards facing and act as barbs to help hold the bird's catch. Additionally, they have spicules under their toes, which are small spikes that further assist them in grasping prey. Ospreys are also able to close their nostrils underwater, allowing them to die for longer periods. Their specialization of fish has allowed the osprey to become one of the most successful birds of prey in the modern era, and that's absolutely brilliant. Today is the 4th of July, Independence Day in the United States, and today we're going to talk about the most American dinosaur, the bald eagle. The bald eagle can be found all over North America, and even as far south as Mexico and Central America. Many people claim the bald eagle as North America's largest raptor, but that's still up for debate. The largest bald eagles can reach 15 pounds or 7 kilograms with a wingspan of about 8 feet or a little under 2.5 meters. A lot of you may have seen this photo before, and it's not photoshopped whatsoever, that's that bird's actual size. Another thing you may find find surprising is that this eagle is actually a sea eagle. Aside from the winter, this species is almost always found near a body of water. Fish and other aquatic prey take up over 50% of the bald eagle's diet. Just like the osprey, they have tiny spicules on their feet that help them grip slippery fish. But don't let that fool you, they are more than capable of taking down larger prey. I mean, this is America's dinosaur we're talking about here. This is the fastest animal in the world that we know of. This is none other than the peregrine falcon, one of the most successful birds in the entire world. It has a near cosmopolitan distribution and can be found on almost every continent. In fact, it's so successful that there are 19 subspecies. They mainly prey on birds, and it's estimated that somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 species are preyed upon, which is about a fifth of the world's bird species. But what sets them apart and makes them so fast? These birds love to nest in cliffs or in tall buildings when available. These areas are perfect for updrafts, allowing them to expend less energy to climb higher into the sky. Once high enough, the peregrine will fold its wings, tuck its legs, and dive. They can reach speeds of over 200 miles per hour or 320 kilometers, with a maximum speed of 242 miles or 389 kilometers. This is literally why the term falcon punch exists. This is the world's largest living eagle. 
Meet the stellar sea eagle. These massive birds have wingspans up to 8 feet or 2.5 meters long, and they can weigh upwards of 10 kilograms, nearly 25 pounds. That being said, some notable individuals in Philippine and harpy eagles have been known to reach around this size as well. But on average, Stellars beats them out almost every time. Like other fish eagles, these guys have tiny spicules or spikes on their feet to help them grip slippery prey. Fish, of course, are their most common prey, and they seem to favor pink and chum salmon. These seafaring birds are often found on the coasts of East Asia. They spend the breeding season typically in Russia before moving south for the winter into areas like China, Korea, and Japan. Though there is one notable individual who has been seen all across North America. And if anything, all that proves is that these eagles are truly some of the best. If you don't believe that the dinosaurs are still around, look no further than the secretary bird. These predatory African birds stand at around 4 feet or 1.3 meters tall, with a wingspan of about 6 to 7 feet or 1.8 to 2.2 meters. Those wings are still put to excellent use because they can still fly. Despite the ability to fly, they spend most of their time hunting on the ground. Secretary birds have extremely long legs in comparison to their body mass. When they sense prey nearby, they start stomping around in an attempt to flush it out. When they do, they run their prey down and begin to stomp on it. Studies done on this stomping motion shows that they mostly gone for the head. Despite being a large bird and a skilled hunter, unfortunately, these guys are still endangered. And unfortunately, their main threat is habitat loss. And hopefully, we can all come together to help protect and preserve this amazing species. This is the largest living penguin species in the world. Adults of this species can reach 110 to 120 centimeters, or about 3.5 to 4 feet. On average, they weigh about 23 to 45 kilograms, or 50 to 100 pounds. Aside from being the largest penguin, these guys have more to them than meets the eye. These penguins have developed incredibly complex calls to assist with finding each other. In fact, they have such specific vocalization that they can recognize each other just by their calls. Out of all penguins, the emperor penguin can dive the deepest, but why? Firstly, this penguin's bones are solid, allowing them to survive much greater pressure than most other animals. They are also able to control their metabolism and shut down non-essential organs when they're diving. This allows them to dive much longer and survive on less oxygen. Another way they adapted to help with this is that their hemoglobin and my myoglobin can bind with oxygen. This can allow them to remain diving even in situations where an animal would normally lose consciousness. These penguins are absolutely magnificent. This is one of Minnesota and Canada's most famous modern dinosaurs. This is the common loon. Loons, like penguins, are an extremely aquatic species and have acquired several adaptations to allow this lifestyle. Like penguins, they don't have the best mobility on land mostly because a loon's feet are set further back on their body than most other birds. This aids them in swimming and allows them to go much faster underwater. Because of this, they also have to do a running start from the water to take off. They do this because they need the momentum taking off, because most of their bones aren't hollow like other birds. Of course, that's another adaptation to an aquatic lifestyle. Two of my favorite things about them are their red eyes and their extremely eerie call. Personally, hearing their call early in the morning on the lake, perfect, nothing beats it. It might come as a surprise, but this is the largest flying bird on the planet. Allow me to introduce the wandering albatross. They are surprisingly large, with wingspans up to 12 feet or 3.7 meters and weighing up to 30 pounds, around 13 kilograms. They have such a long wingspan because they spend a majority of their life in the air above the sea. Based on what we can tell, these birds will rarely land for anything other than to breed and to feed. And they can stay in flight for quite some time, with one individual recorded to have flown 3,700 miles or around 6,000 kilometers in just 12 days. Like all birds, their bones are incredibly light but also incredibly strong due to being pneumaticized. Because of this, the Maori used to hunt them and use their bones as tools like needles and fish hooks. Unfortunately, today, these guys are vulnerable because of bad fishing practices and pollution. And hopefully, we can all come together and preserve this amazing species for all the future generations. Alright, we gotta stop letting ornithologists name birds because some of these are getting ridiculous. These are some of the most ridiculous bird names in the world. The Fluffy Backed Tit Babbler. I got no words for that one. The Gray Go Away Bird. Something tells me that the guy who named this one didn't like him very much. The Satanic Nightjar. Being fair, that one's kinda deserved. Boobies. That is all. The Sad Flycatcher. Whoever named that one must have really been going through it. The Spangled Drongo. This one's literally got Australia written all over it. The Banana Quit. Something tells me that this guy had an issue with his banana split. The Hoary Puffleg. 
I don't even, I don't even have kind of an explanation for that one. That's just ridiculous. Speaking of ridiculous, the tufted tit tyrant. Ornithologists are, are you okay? Do you need help? And last but certainly not least is the Andean cock of the rock. I'm gonna blame the whole country of Peru because this one's your national bird. We gotta let someone else take over because these names are getting ridiculous. I'm convinced that ornithologists are just way too down bad because here are some more of the most ridiculous bird names in the world. Guidelines, please leave me alone. These are actual bird names. The Himalayan snowcock. I don't even know how to react to that one. The somber tit. Though I think they prefer the term goth. You know whoever named this one was an emo kid. The smew. I don't know why, but I feel like that name is more of an insult than anything else. The European shag. That sounds more like an experience than a bird. The dick sissel. Just... Why? And last, but certainly not least, Kaka. I swear, some of y'all take these poop jokes way too far. But apparently not as far as I-